So yeah, if you're new to the channel, this is a series that we do where we teach you how to get started in After Effects, start making really dope stuff. If you did not get the notification, that's probably because you weren't subscribed. So go ahead and make sure you do that right now. We are getting right into this, wasting no time at all. Let's go. Okay, so last time we made fire in our hand. Before that, we made black pink glow up. But this time, we're recreating our favorite Disney approved childhood weapon. That's right, I'm talking about lightsabers. Oh! Raise your lightsabers. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Have you ever wanted to instantly make something cooler? Give it a lightsaber. So this effect brings me back to the old school days of YouTube when I used to watch Freddy Wong or even Mob Kid and I just used to think, how on earth did they do that? Well, luckily for you, we're gonna be going through that step by step. Depending on your knowledge of plugins for After Effects, this can be either really easy or really hard. I highly recommend you check out the top five free plugins for After Effects. And it's okay if you haven't seen that before because I'm gonna also include a link in the description to the plugin that I'm gonna be talking about. It's completely free, not sponsored one of my all-time favorites you might even be like Nate there's a bajillion tutorials out here on how to make lightsabers but I'm gonna tell you if you haven't been doing it like this way that I'm about to show you right now you're probably doing it the super hard way okay so you're super excited to become a Jedi master but before we do anything you're gonna first need to get some footage if you don't have a clip already I'm gonna be uploading the same clip that I'm gonna use up to the patreon but I highly recommend you go out and take your own clip so that, you know, you're actually being able to use it on yourself and it's a little bit more personal. Anyways, let's hop right into After Effects and three, two, one. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in After Effects. If this is completely new to you, you might wanna go check out the VFX Basics tutorial that we released because I talk all about the UI. I'm just gonna be moving a little bit quicker than I did in the last tutorial, but hopefully still at an easy enough pace where if you're a beginner to After Effects, this isn't gonna be super difficult. And also if you're an advanced user, you're gonna find some tips and tricks that are gonna help you speed up your workflow in doing an effect like this. It translates to a whole lot of other effects from VFX, compositing, and animation. We're gonna be going over things like keyframing, masking, rotoscoping what else are we gonna do using plugins which is a huge plus if you've never used a plugin in After Effects highly recommend it save you so much time and it's one of my favorite reasons as to why I use After Effects versus something like hit film or nuke I mean those all have third-party plugins but After Effects has a super comprehensive list so we're gonna be getting this footage now I have this clip so you can use either one that you've taken yourself or the one that you got from a patreon pretty much this looks like it's gonna be able to work I have me and Chriselle fighting against each other with these two lights that we found at Target. I'm just shooting with a fisheye lens on my Canon 80D. <laughs> Bam, I'm just gonna import this clip by dragging and dropping it into After Effects. And from there, we're gonna be making a new composition. Think of a composition like the plate for your VFX sandwich. So be whatever size you want. It just, you know, make sure that you have it set nice and right because it's gonna be essentially housing all of the effects, setting up this composition with the right settings, which is 1920 by 1080p, basically the dimensions of it, how big it is. And then the frame rate, which is super important. I'm gonna set this down to 24 frames per second. The reason why I'm doing 24 frames per second is because I actually shot this footage in 59.94 frames per second. And that's a whole lot of frames. That's essentially double 24 frames per second. And that means I'm gonna go through with a lot slower render times because it's more frames to render. And I'm also gonna have to set more keyframes because it's a lot more frames essentially in between. So what we're gonna do is work in 24 frames per second, which is gonna bump that 59.94 down to 24 and hopefully make it a little bit more workable at the very, very and we're gonna do a technique which is gonna help us change it back from 24 to 59.94 without us having to set too many settings along the way. So once you have that set, you can go ahead and click okay. We're gonna import the footage that we took into the timeline. Now you're gonna see me just dragging it over so I get just about the right timing. So it's not like exactly when I hit the record button, but probably when I'm just about to, you know, slash out this lightsaber and start getting into this quick little target fight that we had. Okay, so once we have that clip nice and set inside of the composition at about the right timing, you can go ahead and create a new solid by right clicking in the timeline. And this solid can be just about any color you want it to be. It does not matter at all, but make sure that's the exact size of the composition. So 
a way to do that is by clicking on this button right here, which is make comp size. And it's super useful because it's just gonna set those dimensions of the solid to the composition settings that we have before. And once that's set, you just go ahead and click okay. Okay, cool. So next we're gonna select on that layer. We're gonna apply Saber. Now there's two ways to apply Saber. It's by right clicking effects and then going all the way down to video copilot and clicking on Saber. But you're gonna see me do it the faster way, which is by pressing the space bar and the control key at the same time, which pops up this really easy customizable menu that lets me just type in Saber and instantly get access to it. So if you're curious as to what that feature is, highly recommend you go ahead and download it. It's called FX Console. It's a free plugin for After Effects. I talk about it in this video as well. So it's super stacked. Make sure you get some of those things because it's gonna save you a whole lot of time with your workflow. And once you have that set, you have Saber installed, you're gonna see that the entire screen is gonna go black except for this line of the Saber. But what we wanna do is go down to the timeline and click on the blending mode, which should be set to normal and change it instead to screen. What that's gonna do is take out all the black background and make those pixels transparent so that we can start to see the footage below underneath. So now that we have that visible, I'm gonna wanna go ahead and move the saber effect to match up roughly where the lightsaber that I'm actually holding is. So the way that I'm doing this is by changing the core start and the core end positioning, which uh, there's multiple ways to do this. It's just by either moving these values over or by clicking on this little like target icon that lets me specifically select on the footage where to make those start and end. And I'm also gonna mess around with the core size, which is pretty much the thickness of the core of the lightsaber. I'm gonna make this look hopefully like it's covering up the entire lightsaber that I'm actually holding. I'm gonna go also down to core taper and change those settings just so it matches a little bit more cleaner than when it did off the bat with the default settings. So since I'm noticing that it's really difficult to see exactly where the lightsaber is underneath, now what I'm gonna do is select on the lightsaber layer, which is the saber plugin that we added, that layer, and I'm gonna click on my keyboard and press the T key, which is gonna pull up my opacity settings. And I wanna lower down this opacity so I start to see the footage even underneath my lightsaber, just so that I'm getting a little sense of reference and I'm able to see what's going on and I'm not just always covering up the footage. When once we're done, we're gonna go back and bump that opacity to 100%, but for just working mode right now, I'm dropping this down to probably something like 20%, maybe 50%, so it's just slightly visible and I'm seeing both of these at the same time. In order to get this lightsaber actually match the lightsaber for all these frames and not just the first frame or the one that we're working on right now, I wanna go ahead and click on the stopwatch icon. It's a really important icon in After Effects. It's basically what you need to do to start keyframing. And if you have no idea what keyframes are, pretty much they're points of data that says a lot of different things. In this case specifically, it's saying, hey, at this point, this course start is gonna be at these specific X and Y values. All we're gonna wanna worry about is clicking on this icon, making sure it's selected, and we're gonna make sure that that keyframe that's set hopefully matches up well with the footage. So as we scrub forward through the timeline, I'm gonna adjust the core start and the core end, and even the taper if I need to, just to make sure that we're matching up with the original footage. Again, as you can see, I'm just going ahead, shifting these keyframes around, making sure that the lightsaber matches up with my movements. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but I'm noticing that it could be a little bit better. So once we have that preview area done, we're gonna go ahead and change the work area, which is essentially how long this composition lasts for. Now, if we have a work area that lasts super long, more than we needed to, after Effects is gonna go ahead and try and render in those frames in the background. Whenever we shorten that work area, which we can do by dragging the slider at the top, and then we're gonna go up to the top to composition settings and click trim comp area to work area so that it also makes sure that everything is happening only in the amount of time that we needed to. Once I have enough keyframes set, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and change back the opacity to 100% so I can see how this looks. I'm gonna press the space bar to start to preview that, and it's gonna quickly cache some of the frames Frames, and once it's caching enough of them, it's gonna go ahead and play it out. Most of the time it might not play in real time just because After Effects takes a little bit of rendering and processing power in order to play each frame after one another. So we're gonna go into Saber and click down on its special effects and these different settings that it's got here. The most important setting that I'm gonna be looking at right now is the core size, roundness, and the offset. Offset is gonna be dealing a little bit with exactly covering over the footage that we needed to, and the end roundness is also gonna let us change the roundness 
to either be more round or less round depending on the shot. So for this one, I think I'm just gonna have it kind of a little bit in between there. And another really cool setting over here is the flicker setting, which we're gonna go ahead and adjust as well. And this is gonna make the light effect a little bit more realistic to what you probably would have seen in the Star Wars movies. We're also gonna go down to distortion and I'm just gonna add a little bit of value to this. I think I'm just using within probably something less than 10 because I don't want it to look all the way distorted and kind of funky. I want it to just be really subtle just so that this saber effect is not something that's entirely straight throughout. The distortion either works on the core or the glow. So I'm gonna add it to both the glow and the core distortion. So that way there's just a little bit of variance in between. And when it comes to making some of these uh, special effects, variance is gonna be one of your favorite friends because it makes footage just all of a sudden look like it's not something done entirely by a computer, but at least something that could happen in real life with different flicker settings or different distortions, pretty much things that people can't predict, but they're also associating with just being real life effects. <laughs> because I like how this looks right now and I think that the motion blur is one of my favorite elements of it, I'm gonna go ahead and increase that so that it's not such a short trail. Already the trail looks pretty decent, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make this trail even longer by going down to the motion blur blur phase and the multiplier settings and increasing those just slightly. Now note, I'm not telling you guys like specific numbers off the bat because I don't want you to worry about that. I want you to worry about more of what looks right to you. It's kind of just about using your best judgment. Go ahead and hit the space bar, preview it as many times as you need to so that you're getting a sense, not just how one frame looks, but how multiple frames look across the entire timeline. Okay, so this is looking really good. There is one more thing that I want to go ahead and add. Well, shoot, actually there's a few things that we're going to add to this. So we're going to right click on the timeline in an empty space and we're gonna create a new adjustment layer. And what adjustment layers do in After Effects is it affects all of the layers below it. So if we have this adjustment layer at the very top and then we have, uh, let's say the saber effect and then the footage below it, whatever effect we apply to the adjustment layer is gonna be applied in a downwards order to the effects below it. So there's all kinds of things that you can start to do, but just know adjustment layers are gonna become one of your best friends. And I pretty much use them because when it comes down to color correcting or adding something that I want, Want both elements to be affected by an adjustment layer is one of those easy things that we can do in compositing to make things look a little bit similar like they're having an effect being applied to them across the board and not just happening to one layer and another layer this is just one of the techniques that you can use in order to blend your layers in between each other in after effects not to be confused with blending mode which is an entirely different thing yeah we're getting more into compositing which is pretty much making your vfx look like they're happening in the real world or a little bit stylized to however you want them to look so on this adjustment layer, we're gonna be applying two of my all-time favorite effects. I actually talk about them in the top 25 best effects for After Effects video. This is curves, which is gonna let me change the color correction of this by adjusting these curves right here. So maybe if I wanna add a little bit more contrast, I'm gonna go with something that looks like this. Maybe if I wanna lower the highlights, essentially the X and Ys of these graphs are gonna be the different areas of brightness and levels on your video. This area more towards the right is gonna be dealing with your highlights and things like that, whereas on the left side is gonna be dealing with more of your shadows and your black. So once I have something that looks generally nice, I'm also gonna go ahead and add in CC vignette, which is gonna blend in the corners of the footage with this nice vignette and make it look as if the entire effect is happening to each other. So it's just kind of a neat little lighting trick that can be super useful when used right. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I'm noticing that this lightsaber is not matching the original footage exactly how I want it to. And one of those reasons is because I'm sure shooting with a fisheye lens, which is about an eight millimeter lens, super, super wide. And we're getting all of these distortions around the edges of the frame. So you're gonna see all of the straight lines start to curve in. And this lightsaber though is going exactly straight. So one of the things that you can do to fix that is select on the saber layer and I'm gonna right click it or I'm gonna press control space to access FX console where I'm gonna type in optics compensation. Optics compensation is really useful for fixing VFX shots that have a little bit of distortion because of the lenses themselves. So in this case, even though it makes sense probably to make this lightsaber wrap around much like how the original VFX looks, I'm gonna go for a little bit of a stylized effect in which I'm gonna actually make it go in the opposite direction. And it's gonna be extra straight, but at the same time, it's gonna hopefully cover up all the rounded features of the video. So this is gonna make the lightsaber feel like it's acting out of the bounds of the fisheye lens for a little bit more impact. It's something super subtle that really no one even 
even notice this, but when you're watching it, it should convey the feeling that this lightsaber is a little bit more 3D, a little bit more independent of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and tweak these settings a little bit here. And once that's looking pretty good to me, I think one more thing that's super iconic of Star Wars are the sparks that come off of the lightsabers whenever they're deflecting something or whenever they're hitting something. Easy way to add sparks to footage is by pretty much having a resource of sparks. So I'm gonna be using Video Copilot's Action Essentials, which has a whole bunch of spark effects. I know though that you can type in on YouTube and like VFX sparks and they may be on a black background. Uh, there is a little bit of tweaking that I'm gonna to do to these sparks so that they actually match the footage. But essentially this is gonna be the pack that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna import the sparks from this folder into our composition and I'm gonna go ahead and place the sparks at about the right time that they should be coming on. So now that this is in the composition, we're gonna press R on our keyboard, which is gonna pull up the rotation tools. And that's gonna let me rotate this around. Now you're noticing I'm able to just click and drag anywhere to reposition it. And once I have it in a nice spot, I'm gonna drag that layer down below the adjustment layer and below the lightsaber. That way the sparks are happening beneath all of the effects that we're gonna be putting on top of them. And using this little time stretch feature, right click on the layer. What I'm trying to do is make these sparks happen with a little bit more realistic timing to this effect. So I think it's gonna maybe speed it up a little bit or slow it down, just something until I know that we're having something that looks nice and natural for this scene. Okay, so these sparks look pretty good, but I think that I can add a curves to them so that way they also are color corrected to the entire scene and one of the things that I'm noticing is that the lightsaber itself the core of it is super white super bright so let's go ahead and make these sparks that come off of it also with the same brightness and by just increasing the highlights of this is one of those ways that we're just gonna be able to punch it up and make these sparks extra brighter than they already are I can even go ahead and add something like a glow and change the threshold and radius but I think I ended up scrapping that because it looked a little bit too un natural for the scene. Surprisingly, right, the sparks that I had already looked like they had their own natural glow settings or their own natural glow in the footage itself. So if you're using a footage though that doesn't have something that looks natural, you can just go ahead and add a glow to it. Maybe even double up the glows. I talk all about using glow in the last tutorial as well. So go ahead and check that out if you're a little bit confused on how to use glow. Essentially, we're just going to be messing with two features of it, which is the radius and the threshold. And the threshold affects what is going to be information for glow. So the lighter parts are gonna be used for glow if you have it set to only like 80% and above, but if you have it lower than that, then it's almost the entire footage is gonna be used for glowing. All right, so this is looking cool. Now, this is getting a little bit messy because we have multiple layers going on. So let's go ahead and quickly clean up this project by renaming these layers. And the way to rename the layer is by clicking on the name inside of the timeline. I think you might have to double click it or hard hold it for a few seconds for it to pop up properly and then type in whatever name you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and name it this right here and once all of that is nice and neat and clean we get to do all of that all over again for the second lightsaber in the scene so you probably don't have to sit through this because you get what I did before I'm pretty much just doing the same exact thing as I did earlier except now I'm doing it for Chriselle's lightsaber yeah let's just run through this really quickly you know Again, quick rundown of what happens. I am making a new saber solid. I am changing the keyframes and I'm making sure that all of these course start and end features start and end where her lightsabers actually is. The way that I'm even fixing these keyframes, if you wanna be able to access them, you can press U on your keyboard so you can see all the keyframes laid out for whatever it is inside of the composition for this layer. Okay, shoot, I kinda just wiggled this camera real quick. Okay, so this is a super important part that I want you to pay attention to. This is where Chriselle's sword is crossing over my lightsaber. And why did I call it a sword? It's a lightsaber, duh. Okay, so this is the part where her lightsaber is crossing over mine, but I want it to be hidden behind the actual handle of the lightsaber. And so the way that I'm gonna do this is by doing a process called rotoscoping. Now, the way that we're gonna get to be able to rotoscope this out is by clicking on the pen tool, which is all the way up here. And then I'm just gonna quickly click and points around this lightsaber. Doesn't have to be perfect, you know, you just kind of give it something kind of general and rough here. <laughs> Okay, so once that mask is set, what we're gonna go down and do is change the mask blending mode to subtract, which you can find by clicking down on the layer and pressing M on your keyboard to pull up mask options. Once we have that set to subtract, then we're gonna go back into the saber layer and change uh, the alpha mode specifically to mask core. And that's looking pretty good. So as you can see, the glow is still acting on the layer above it. 
which is just that lightsaber right there. And it's gonna get this nice blue glow, which is kind of like a light wrap, except we're gonna be taking out the core so it's gonna look like it's behind it, which is essential for making this scene look like it's happening in 3D space right now. We're gonna go ahead and keyframe in now this mask for the rest of the frames. And the way that we're gonna keyframe this is by going back into the mask settings and clicking on the stopwatch icon right next to mask path. And this is gonna be the path that we just set or this mask specifically. It's gonna lock in that frame. And as we scrub through the timeline, we can go ahead and make changes to that mask and the mask is gonna change accordingly. So that way we get a nice looking sequence just like we have right here. I'm also going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer and then I'm gonna also add in curves just to do another bit of color correction here. And what this adjustment layer is gonna be is the way that lights when they like collide into each other, they grow for a bit before dying out. I wanna mimic the same effect of two lightsabers just slashing and just making this super powerful blinding light, except I don't wanna just hit this with a full white light. What I wanna do is instead make the entire footage and the saber start to glow a little bit brighter, actually probably a lot brighter. And the way that we're doing this is entirely with curves. It's gonna be this dynamic lighting that we're adding to it. One of the things that we can do here is also click the stopwatch tool right by this graph, which lets us keyframe in the lighting and the color correction information that curves lets us adjust. So it's gonna start off normal, looking like a linear line, just completely straight. And then I'm gonna move forward a few frames up to right when the collision hits. And I'm just gonna bump up the highlights all the way up, still keeping a little bit of curve so that we're just not blowing out all the, all the colors and blowing out all of the information there but hopefully making it look like getting hit with the extreme light flare huge energy coming from this impact pretty sure if you could tell from the original footage there was going at this pretty slowly there's not like this huge impact but it's going to be able to communicate a lot more energy happening once we add this adjustment layer now the cool part is we can also retime this adjustment layer to only happen for a few frames and only have this curves adjustment going from normal to upwards and once we have that set I'm gonna go ahead and and duplicate that same adjustment layer and move it over to every single point wherever there's a collision of these two lightsabers in the timeline. Now, since I don't want it to look exactly the same each time for these collisions, I can change the opacity of the adjustment layer. This is gonna change the amount that is affecting all the layers below it. So if this opacity is set to something like 80%, then we're gonna see that the footage is not gonna get as bright as it was for the other one. And this uh, little variance is hopefully gonna give us something that looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more representative of each of these lightsaber impacts. I can even adjust how the curves affect it for variance, but I think this is already looking pretty good. So I might just leave it at that. And as I'm going through, I'm just previewing this again, and I might have to do just a little bit more cleanup, making sure that these impacts happen at the right time, and that my keyframes are all in the right time. It's really good just to go back always and keep previewing some of the sections once you're at a nice good resting point. You know, maybe you'll get something to drink, maybe you take a walk, you know, come back, get some pizza, who knows, take a hit, take breaks along the way, because sometimes you might just be working on something thinking it looks super dope, and then you come back to and you realize, oh, shit, this looks, you know, pretty ass. I, I got so much more to do from it. The mental fatigue has worn off. So that's exactly why I'm going through this and making sure multiple times that my keyframes are lined up to where I want them to be. Now, if you're noticing some little hiccups along the way, you're gonna wanna do something that I recommend for every single project, at least at one point, which is purging your disk cache. It's a part of using After Effects. Some of you know, I wish that they kind of just did it earlier on when things start to mess up, but hey, I get it, you know, it's just a part of the workflow. So after after Effects is actually saving all of these frames as a part of your cache. And once it gets too big, it starts getting all confused and wonky. So we're gonna go up to here on the top, top bar. We're gonna select Purge and Purge this Cache, clean up and delete all of the preview frames that we made. We're just gonna let that go ahead and re-render again. We should see a lot of the problems and crashes and glitches in After Effects go away just by doing that. If that does not fix some of the issues with After Effects, you can go ahead and also just close the program, open it back up, but I still recommend you clear the disk cache because that's going to be the number one cause of issues when using After Effects. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to select all of these layers here and I'm going to pre-compose it. Once I have all of that pre-composed, I'm also going to go into the composition settings and I'm going to change it now back to 59.94. Since I have all the keyframes set pretty well in 24 frames per second, it may be a little, little bit off when I shift to 59.94. The main points of it will still be there. It, you know, it won't be too
too far off. It's just about a double increase in the frames, but all the things that happen in between will start to come together. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm gonna be adding another effect. This one isn't a free one. Premium plugin is called Twixter. It lets me time remap pretty uh, usefully. It creates all of the frames in between if I'm going from 100% to uh, like 20% speed. After Effects also comes built in with a time remapping feature. So you can use that the same exact way by right clicking on the layer and clicking time remap. It's gonna let you set keyframes for you want certain things to happen. Being able to shift those around will speed up footage or slow it down depending. The reason why I'm adding a Twixter now to this time remapping it at the very end is because most of this does not look like it's an intense fight. So we're gonna go ahead and speed up at certain points of the footage by changing this speed value from 100% to maybe 200% for a little bit going forward through the timeline and then actually cranking this all the way down during something like an impact. This is gonna add a little bit more energy to every movement that we do in the footage. Hopefully be able to clean up the fact that we weren't really fighting with lightsabers in this. What I'm doing with these now is just changing the keyframes. I'm having it go from 100% speed to 20. And I'm gonna hold it here at 20%. So I want this moment of slow motion. I'm gonna scrub forward in the timeline. I'm gonna select another keyframe to make it at 20 so that way for this entire little section is going slow motion and then moving a few frames forward to 100% so that way it speed ramps all the way back up and pretty much that's how you make something called a speed ramp. It's one of the useful tools of After Effects and even in Premiere you can do it but a lot of video editors use speed ramps to make things look a lot better. Gibson Hazard used speed ramps a lot. Who else? Uh, Freddie Wong even does it. It's just one of those nice ways to be able to control time in After Effects. So this is looking pretty good. Now I think that we're just about ready to make this a final render. So I'm gonna select on this composition, the one that we have time remapped. I'm gonna go all the way up to composition and click add to render queue. The settings that you render out in are gonna be dependent on what you are probably gonna be doing with this final clip. I'm gonna be specifically uploading it to YouTube. So I know I'm gonna go through to my after codex or I'm gonna make this an MP4 file or a small MOV. Pretty much set this however you want it to be. Just note, don't use AVI for something like this because that's gonna become a huge, huge file it's pretty much an uncompressed file. One of the best ones to start to use is MOV or MP4. Sometimes your computer might not come with MP4 installed. So just go ahead and use MOV animation or use MOV ProRes, depending if you're on a Mac. It's really gonna be dependent on what computer you're on. A little bit more information on rendering will be coming up in another tutorial. <laughs> okay, so that looks just about done. This looks like a pretty cool effect. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add sound effects in Premiere so that this entirely comes together. <laughs> If you followed along this far, you know, just go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back because you just sat through becoming a Jedi Master in After Effects. And if you're able to make something really cool with this effect, go ahead, drop us a tag on Instagram so we can see it, or even other people in the community can see it. I'm sure they're gonna enjoy seeing what you make. It is something that I did not go over in the video that you think I absolutely need to go over. It just didn't make any sense. Just please leave a comment down below. We're gonna check it out and maybe someone else who saw this and knows a little thing or two about After Effects will be able to help you out as well. Make sure you hit like and subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Peace.